Hi there guys. This is going to be kind of a dissected view of my two Sloan piston flush valves. I have a Sloan Naval quiet flush and which is probably from the 70s or 80s and I have a Sloan Star flushometer from the 40s 30s or 40s anyway which I've already kind of laid out in exploded fashion and I'm gonna take the navel apart and then use the dissected pieces of the star to kind of give you an idea because they're both very similar. These valves are basically the same as far as the components go and the Sloan crown was also virtually the same as a star. The difference in the navel being that some of the parts in a navel are made of mono metal, whereas in a star or a crown they might be copper or brass or some other metal. Mono metal is an alloy that's very corrosion resistant and um, because these have some more mono metal in the construction, these were suitable to flush salt water on ocean going boats where they use salt water to flush toilets. So these valves have been around since the 30s. When, I think is when they start making started making them. And they're pretty neat. They're pretty interesting. They're more complicated than a diaphragm type valve such as a, a Sloan Royal or a Delaney Flush Boy. And they have some advantages and disadvantages. I'm going to take the cap off of the navel. First of all, I think these valves look kind of cool. So you take you have a cap. I don't know if you can see that in there. And that's a smooth cylinder bore. And I don't know if you can see. Yeah, maybe you can see. There's a um, an adjustment screw. There's like a flathead screw in there that um, causes that center there um, to screw in or out. And that's because by design you can use that screw to adjust the flush volume on one of these piston valves. That's uh, one way you can adjust the flush volume. So you've got the cylinder which is also the cap. Now some piston valves, especially modern ones, do not incorporate the cylinder in the cap, which is kind of interesting. Um, Sloan still makes the navel pretty much in this exact same fashion. The star has not been made, I think, since the 50s. Um, they make the gem, which I think has always been... I've never actually seen a gem. I think that's been kind of more of an economy piston flushometer not quite as desirable as one of these and then they've made the crown the crown used to be a valve pretty much just like either one of these the new crowns are a bit different uh, they've kind of redesigned them they are only being made as low consumption flush valves now 1.6 or 1.28 or less and they're not not quite as good solid quality as these old ones. Um, I would bet these are probably the best piston flushometer that has ever been made as far as piston valves go. So you got your cap. Then you got the piston. This whole thing here is the piston assembly. And you've got a rubber cup here which is kind of a double cup that goes inside of the bore the cylinder you might hear air moving in and out this uh, 
piston actually seals inside the cylinder. So on top of this piston you have an upper chamber and below it, in the area below it, you'll have what's called a lower chamber. This surface here is the valve seat. I don't know if you can see in there or not. Well, anyway. You know what? Hang on. Okay, I got a flashlight here. You see a black rubber ring in there? Well, that is a rubber valve seat that is uh, pressed inside this this uh, body. And I don't know if you can see. Oh, there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you can see a black rubber valve seat, and then there's a plastic ring inside of it which I don't know if you can tell has very fine teeth in it that's a silencing ring which uh, as this valve is called is the quiet flush version of the navel this valve has a few features that allow it to flush more quietly than the normal uh, navel and that silencing ring is one of them because this surface of the piston here where my thumb is actually contacts that black rubber ring when the piston is pushed down that's where the water is cut off so there's this small space down around this is where the water comes in here kind of hard to explain how this works but the uh, piston will be seated against that rubber ring the water flows in fills this area which is the lower chamber sorry the finger there um, I don't know if you can see it there's a little hole in there water will enter that hole it'll come up through this hole in the center there is a uh, moving part in there now I can't find the one for the star, I thought I had it here somewhere, but anyway. But anyway, so the water comes through here, the center hole, pumps that upper chamber up in here full of water, goes down through these two holes fills up the inside of the um, piston, which is hollow. Fills up that space, pushes against this here. This is the relief valve. When you flush the handle, It cracks that valve open. It releases all of the pressure in the top chamber and the water pressure down here in the bottom part of the piston pushes the piston up and it lifts the piston up above that valve seat down there and water dumps at high volume through the supply straight down the valve and the valve is flushing at that point. And then the key to the valve resetting itself is this little 
piece of metal in there. Sloan calls it the expeller. This is a metering device. It's part of the what I would call the bypass system in the valve. As the toilet is flushing, water is going straight down through the valve, but it's also slowly coming back through this hole here and forcing past the expeller, which is that little uh, metal thing sticking out there. And it fills up, fills the top chamber back up. And it does it slowly at a very controlled rate. So as that happens, it pushes the piston down slowly at such a speed that it will govern a 3.5 gallon flush or a 4.5 or 1.6 or whatever the valve is set at. Which is where this adjustment screw comes into play because as that adjustment screw sticks down inside this cover it will contact that expeller and push it down when the piston is thrust up and so it comes back down at a controlled rate and um, that's basically how a piston valve works. Now the disadvantage of a piston valve is that you've got a rubber part making friction inside that cylinder so it's it's a it's a wear point and this a valve like this will probably work fine until that rubber gets worn out and you have to replace you can replace either the rubber or you can replace the whole piston but the advantage of this is that this style of bypass is self-cleaning so if there's any debris in the water if the, the water source is known to have particles in it or maybe you've got an old building with rusty pipes and you just got uncontrollable sediment in the water this type of valve will work very well it, it will be very tolerant of sediment whereas a diaphragm type valve doesn't handle sediment very well and it will have a tendency to stick open and continuously flush um, until somebody turns turns the stop off, the control stop, and you have to replace the diaphragm at that point. So these are best for severe water conditions. That's when these piston valves have the edge. So that goes back in there like that. Now, the handle assembly, this is how the handle works. When you cock the handle in any direction, watch that right there. See how that, that goes out? So when you put it in here, see how that goes out? So the piston sits down in there and that handle bumps the relief valve just like that and it causes it to dump the pressure in the upper chamber and that's when the piston is forced up and the valve begins flushing and then as the piston comes back down it returns to a point like about there. If the valve, if you were to hold the valve open, so in operation it'll do something like that. You release the handle and the valve will come back and rest in that position. 
if you were to hold the handle open these valves are designed to not stick open because what would happen is the bottom of this relief valve is retractable so what would happen is you flush the valve valve opens you hold the handle the piston returns and it just collapses it just retracts that retractable section of the relief valve this valve does not open back up and the piston returns to its closed position so that's how that works that's why uh, if one of these valves is working right any Sloan valve will not flush continuously if you hold the, if you continue to hold down the handle and that's why so I can put this back together this is an older piston it's all metal <clears throat> and then uh, well I'm not going to put this back together because I'm missing a part but that's how that works a cap to a star looks like that some rough brass. There's a decorative cover. Goes over the adjustment screw. It looks like that. Um, hopefully that made sense and I hope you found it interesting. Um, I'll see you in the next video.